Okay, welcome back. So in this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to set up um, a timer capture um, in Cube IDE um, so that so that you um, um, are able to at least start getting interrupts. For, you know, in this video, we'll just work on getting the interrupts, making sure that we're hitting getting into that that um, um, in, into that handler, and then once we are, then the next next uh, uh, bit we'll actually look at well how do we, you know how do we actually make this timer capture um, uh, measurement okay so um, so let's see let's get started here so um, what I want to do is I'm going to go into cube IDE here and this is just cube IDE I'm going to create a new STM32 project in this case just to demo it. So it's now you may be working from an existing project. That's fine. Um, if you're in my class, um, it's almost certainly that you'll have a large uh, bit of code, and you're going to be want to be creating a command and, and all that. I'm not going to deal with that at all in this video. I'm just going to deal with okay. How do you actually get the timer to to function or to, to get that capture to happen? Okay, so. Board selector here. Let's see. So I'm going to select the L432. Oops. That board there. So we'll just create a base project with this one here. And we'll call this a timer. Cube's doing its magic here. Okay. So if we go back over to our, um, come over here to our document here. This is what we use to hook up the sensor. So let me zoom in a little bit on this here. So we're going to be hooking to PA5. We're going to uh, look at PA5. We're going to want it to be a timer too. Okay, so PA5, let me zoom in on our, our pins here. Come back over to cube. I'm going to zoom right in. So PA5 is down here if I select it. And those are my options for it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look at timer 2, channel 1. So timer 2 <coughs> is the larger timer, which has multiple channels, which could be either output capture, input compare, those sorts of things. So I'm going to choose channel one, and then I'm going to come over here to timers, I'm going to timer two, and so I want channel one, and I'm going to make it input capture direct mode, and so I'll come down here, and I'm going to leave all this the same, rising edge, yep, so I want to go rising edge to rising edge, and so um, let's go into our NVIC, and we're going to turn on the interrupt, that global interrupt. And then now, now we're going to have to enable. So, so when I say this NVIC here, uh, when I turn on the global interrupt, uh, that, that means a timer, timer two can generate an interrupt. Now, the specific source, <coughs> sorry, the specific source we're going to use will be channel one. <coughs> All right. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let's let's come over here to. Um, I think we're. We're done here, if I can think this through. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, um, save this. Let it go ahead and do its generate. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off my... Um, I'm going to make this look so it looks like your project so we can see what's going on. Deselect like my working set. And I'm going to create a new working set here. Um, Add 
this one to that working set. So here's my code. Let me close this down just to make sure we're looking at the right main. I think that was the one that just opened up. <coughs> okay, here we are. Um, this is our, our base code. Let's go ahead and, and, and you know, do our kind of our normal build. Let's build it just to make sure everything's cool. We'll go ahead and, and drop it into the target. Um, yep, that looks right. Say okay. See where everything starts up here. All right, so now when I run it, um, you know, I can run it and pause it and run it and pause it and I'll be, I'll be um, just stuck right here, right? So I'm just, I'm just doing while one. And in fact, that, that timer capture is not going to actually generate an interrupt, right? It's going to, it's going to be, um, um, the, the, the circuitry is capturing, but there, and if I were to go and read the particular register where that capture is happening, that date is out there, but I'm not going to get an interrupt on every edge like I might want if I wanted to grab that time on every on every pass through the um, every pass the interrupt. So let's um, let's come down here to our timer to init, and so down here it does this um, how timer um, input capture config channel. And so what I want to do here is I actually want to in this um, in this code here I'm going to actually add a line here to cause it to turn on the interrupt. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna. So this what this will do is <coughs> this will start the interrupt for the timer channel one. Now later on we're gonna look at just turning it on and leaving it on is not exactly what we want to do. Um, so let's go ahead and um, we'll do that for now. Uh, but down the road we're only gonna want to turn on that interrupt when we want to make a measurement. We don't want the thing interrupting all the time. The thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of these. Um, I don't. We don't need these as part of our um, yeah. So all right. So let's go ahead and and uh, stop this and let's go ahead and build it. All right. So again, this is gonna this is going to interrupt um, when timer channel one gets a rising edge, right? Which right now it's getting. You know, about 300 and, let's see, uh, 400, 400 of those. How do I know that over here? If I look at the frequency, it's getting 430 of those edges, rising edges, every second, right? So that, that interrupt's getting, you know, it's going to fire all the time. So let's come back over here to our key by DE. Um, so if we come over to the interrupt um, handler here, we should have we should have gotten an interrupt handler over here, hopefully. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, um, go ahead and uh, see if I can uh, toggle a breakpoint right there. And so let's go ahead and now we've built our code. Let's go ahead and drop it into the debugger. All right, so let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so you're going to find that I'm going to run this. And it's going to seem like, hey, wait a second, I am, I am stuck in this all the time. And the reality is, that's true. And, it, <coughs> and something you have to understand about the hardware is that that timer 
even though the debugger has stopped the CPU, that timer is still, you know, it's still getting interrupt edges. Those edges are still hitting it 400 and something times, you know, whatever. 400 and something times, 438 times a second. And so um, it's going to be causing this interrupt to happen over and over and over again. And so what we're going to want to do is come into this code and um, um, we're going to want to... Um, um, we just have to know that when we when we get to a break point, it's going to cause us to, um, to to constantly be stuck in here as long as that interrupt is happening. So we're really just using this in this case to confirm that oh, indeed we are getting these interrupt handlers. That that that's that's a first really important sort of step. So I'm gonna for this video to kind of keep things short. That's all I'm going to show for this one. And next time, what I'll show you is, okay, well, how do we actually read the values of the particular variables that are, um, are relevant here? All right, so next time, we'll go ahead and read, we'll go ahead and read those time values out of the, the capture system.